Hi, today at Kervan Yolda Dizilmez, we have a journalist from Sweden, uh, Ingrid Kalvis, and today we're going to speak very closely again with the latest developments between uh, Turkey and Sweden regarding uh, Sweden's application for NATO membership. So, uh, hi, Ingrid. Hi, Eli. Nice to be back. You. <laughs> it's nice to see you again. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Ingrid, now there's a few developments that really would like to share with uh, our viewers because it's very interesting. Sweden is really uh, insisting in um, uh, declaring an open relationship uh, with the PYD, which is becoming uh, a, a major issue actually, because Turkey is also resisting and insisting that they uh, stop their ties uh, and uh, relationships because uh, internally, it's uh, actually uh, affecting our uh, view on, on terrorism, really, and our relationship. But in the meantime, we can see that the dialogue with between Sweden and the PAD is, is developing and it's going forward. And in fact, the Social Democrats made a deal with a former uh, PAD member of parliament, uh, Amini uh, Kakababev. So uh, if you like, we can take it from there. And what is, why have they made a deal and uh, why are they insisting on becoming so close? Well, what happened was that a couple of days ago, uh, uh, the Swedish uh, uh, attorney general, the minister of justice, he was, they did want, uh, the Sweden Democrats wanted him out. They said, we have no confidence in this man anymore because he's been caught lying time and time again. So there was this, this voting yesterday. And since uh, the, the Social Democrats only have a very weak majority without Amin Baba, it would be 174 votes against this minister and 174 to let him stay. So she is the person you need to, to get on your side if you are a social democratic prime minister. So what they did uh, was that they, and you could ask why, why didn't she just drop this minister? He's, he's horrible. I don't think she even likes him, okay. uh, but she made it a question for the whole government. She said at the press conference, if you kick him out, I will go too. And then we will have a crisis, a government crisis, three so, months before ele elections. So she blackmailed the parliament. She did, she did, uh, uh, but she still needed the, the vote of Amina Kakabave. So they had new talks with her and she said, you promised me that you would send money to YPD and I, you didn't do it. And they said, yes, we did, yes, we did, yeah, but I want more. So really what they decided, we don't know, but they bought her vote for the second time. And this is very, very strange because I guess that this, uh, this deal they have with her is what makes Erdogan really upset. And when they confirm that deal and, uh, you know, maybe they promised her even more money. And, you know, I don't know. Do you know how much they promised her more? Because I no, mean, I, I, last, I don't know interview remember we uh, we explained that uh, the budget went up to 370 million uh, yeah. that the Swedish government was going to uh, send but now they're going to uh, put an additional payment there I guess so we haven't been told what uh, the deal is about uh, they just said that we confirmed our deal but you know I mean Kakababa she was going back and forth these days that we didn't know what will happen in in the vote she said no I will not vote for him oh maybe I will vote for him she she changed her mind yes. all the time Raising she's really state. making the most of her last three yeah. months in the Swedish parliament she's, do you think she'll be elected again no, no, no. She has no party. They kicked her out. Uh, the former Communist Party that she belonged to, they kicked her out. Uh, so, no, no, she will not be in Parliament anymore. Uh, I don't know. Just uh, to clarify the Swedish election system, can she uh, become an independent candidate? No, you have to have a party. Okay. She could, okay. She could start a party or form a party, but very difficult. I see. In Turkey, for example, uh, in the past, uh, <laughs> uh, former uh, 
members of parliament affiliated with actually uh, terrorist PKK groups, uh, actually, uh, because their, their party was banned, they uh, got organized, they made independent uh, applications, and they got into parliament with independent votes, and then in parliament they joined the party, they joined another party. So it was like a, you know, a backdoor okay. uh, way. So th that's yeah. something I just wanted to know. That's you know, not possible here. That's not possible. Here. But the, the strange thing is that why do they do? Why is it so important for them? Uh, because this will make Erdogan even more upset and, and, and will, he will not let Sweden into NATO. So I don't really understand why the Social Democratic Prime Minister is doing all this. Well, uh, it's actually, well, we have elections as well next year. So uh, our president has insisted so much, has made such an issue on Finland and Sweden not going into NATO uh, mm. that um, he's also, you know, trying to balance it with the internal politics as well. You know, but at the end of the day, uh, the argument that he's put forward uh, is is backed very much with the Turkish people, because you cannot. Uh, I mean, how can Turkey be side by side with uh, a country that can, you know, has such uh, negotiations, etc. I mean, openly, especially. But what is very concerning is that. Uh, uh, you talk about, you know, uh, democracy, you talk about freedom of speech, you're talking about, uh, you know, uh, being open and honest with the people, but then you have, uh, you know, backstage arguments with a terror group uh, for Sweden. I mean, this is really a, a major problem, I think. But uh, amongst all... I this think that, you know, the government, the government would not call them terrorists. They call them um, the patriots uh, fighting, you know, uh, liberation movements and so on. So that's, the Social Democrats have been doing this for a long time, you know, giving money to the Palestinian organizations and to Polisario in Morocco. They, they have been meddling with these groups that they call liberation movements and other people call terrorists for many years. And, you know, when they can't, when they are not in government, when they can't, when they can't take the taxpayers money, they take their own money and send it through different organizations to social democratic party. You so know, they the, always find a way to send but, money. But you know, Ingrid, the, the major problem is uh, that um, fire burns the place that uh, it, it starts. And uh, these uh, terror organizations are really affecting the, the, the area that they are uh, mainly operating in. So, uh, as I said in the previous program, Turkey, for example, because of terror, has uh, lost 50, over 50,000 lives here. I mean, this is a huge problem. I mean, yeah. I would really be interested to see, I mean, I, I hope this never happens in Sweden, but if you have terror attacks and they're directly affiliated with uh, the PYD, then I would really be interested in seeing what your, what your government would be replying and, and how would they defend themselves? You know, mm -hmm. because you know uh, what I think, I think that the Social Democrats believe that they have bought ourselves out of terrorism because we give money to them and they okay. have sort of a safe haven in Sweden. And so that's what I think that they believe. Well, uh, a person living in Turkey and uh, especially a person that's working in politics very closely, especially with immigration and uh, with the Syrian issue, I can tell you very clearly that you do not buy terrorists. You only no. buy literally chaos. But the time the chaos becomes evident in the future, it stays there. But in the future, definitely, it becomes your problem. You buy problems. Yeah. You don't. You don't. You don't make deals with terrorists. You know. No, I don't think that is a great idea. Yeah. I just tell. I'm just telling you what I think yeah, that the yeah. social democrats believe. Of course. So I mean. Uh, I have to ask you, why is Sweden insisting so much on NATO? Well, that's a very strange question, because uh, the Social Democrats um, have always been so proud of, of uh, Sweden being neutral and not in any military alliance. And then Putin invaded Ukraine and everybody got crazy. They are talking about this could happen to Sweden too. First he takes Ukraine and then he takes Finland and then he takes Sweden. 
why would he do that? I mean, the thing with Ukraine and Russia is very special. It has nothing to do with Finland and Sweden, not at all, but the people are buying it. They are really scared. Oh, Putin will come here next and he will take us and he'll take everything and we but, will, you know, we will but, die and we will, and we don't have a defense anymore. We used to have a very, very good defense in Sweden, but after, you know, the Soviet Union collapsed, they said, no, now we be no more wars ever so we don't need the defense anymore but i mean has i mean as far as i know putin has not made any remarks even about uh sweden attacking no. sweden or coming to i mean i mean you are sorry but literally the swedish public is just buying uh the hollywood stunts that uh the yeah. same story that uh america sold for syria Literally, oh, it's this big panic. It's this huge uh, story. And, I mean, at the end of the day, what America is trying to do is to get you into the same league so that you're li literally under uh, its control. Basically, yeah. I mean, this this is the basic truth. Of I course it is. I mean, and, of course it is. And and, uh, and I don't understand why so many people buy into this, but it's like, you know, they're in this mass formation. First, it was about COVID. Everybody was so scared of that, even though uh, it was very difficult to, to, to die from it. And now they just changed. Now it's Ukraine. Now we have to be afraid of the Russian bear and they will take us and we need someone to defend us because we don't have a defense anymore or we the, we have a small defense and that's good but it's not enough it's not enough if Putin would decide to take Sweden but uh, so what the only advantage for you to getting into NATO is defense you think yeah that's how they're uh, actually marketing this situation yeah, for you? Yeah, absolutely. That is very dangerous for us. But if we get intonated, they will come and help us. And it is so stupid because, you know, NATO is the U.S. And the U.S. is bankrupt. They, you know, it's, it's horrible what they are doing. So I don't think, I actually believe that when the it will become more dangerous for Sweden when, if we get into NATO, into NATO. So let's say that you got in. Let's uh, create a mm. story here. Let's say that you got in. Then you see that it's it's a huge problem because you're not, you're basically losing your independence in, in uh, yeah. a few ways. But then uh, first, is the Swedish uh, public ready to lose its independence? Is the Swedish public ready to be uh, so closely affiliated with America and its politics? Is the Swedish uh, public, are the Swedish public rather, ready to go into a war that maybe America may seem uh, suitable? Are you ready to send troops to a war that doesn't even concern you? Well, I don't... I mean, don't no, I would not do it, but I think that the Swedish public, they have been... The, you know, the propaganda has been massive and they don't talk about, you know, the Americans having bases in Sweden and they could have nuclear weapons there, even though they say, no, they promise that they can do whatever they want if they have a base or bases in your country. And exactly. that will make the whole world very much more dangerous because the Nordic countries has always been nuclear free, but now it will be very, very dangerous. And But I don't think that Swedes, um, they don't understand this because all the mainstream media is just pumping up. The threat is Putin. That's why everybody must be very happy if we come into NATO. But can you not see the, the, the trap that you're uh, literally becoming into? Because, look, uh, PYD, PKK, is uh, what America has established. So uh, mm. now, literally, what America is uh, supporting very strongly is literally bargaining, bargaining with you so that you're, they have uh, parliamentary uh, stability. So uh, your government is, is saying, OK, well, I have to bargain. You're bargaining literally with America for your own stability right now. So when you mm. get into NATO, this uh, will be increased. In so the volume will be increased in so much that uh, you will, you'll be even more uh, dependent and even more uh, 
stuck in a situation where it's very difficult to get out of and become, uh, how can I say it, come back to your own um, independent decisions. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm aware of that and I'm very unhappy about the situation. I told you that last time that yeah, uh, since yeah. I don't want us, uh, I, I, I hope that, uh, that Erdogan uh, continues to, to yeah. make problems <laughs> for us, especially not until after the elections, because I think that if people can cool down, if the Ukrainian war, you know, it might it might stabilize itself that Russia takes the Donbass region and then it's peace. And then people maybe can wake up from their hysteria and say, well, used to, I actually don't want Sweden to be in a military alliance. I want Sweden to be independent, as we have always been. Because you have to also think about uh, the situation that when you become a NATO member, then you will also increase your army. Yep. And you have a lot of foreigners now living in your mm. country. And yeah. uh, because there are a lot of unemployed foreigners, especially in Malmo. So are you really prepared to increase your army and also increase it with foreign members that are not even Swedish by origin? Yeah. This is another problem. Look, you ah. will have a very different, different demography uh, of people in your army representing Sweden that have nothing to do with you and your army. This is another major problem that you really have to think about. I mean, here in Turkey, uh, there's been some uh, few, few um, stories where some Syrians have become, you know, in the, in the Turkish army and the Turkish people have just gone crazy. We mm -hmm. don't want any, I mean, for us, our, our army is very sacred. Uh, it's very, mm, very, very well respected. So because mm. our founder, Mustafa Kemal Tatruk, is, uh, you know, came from the army and uh, yeah. because of that, our, uh, you know, history with the army and because the army is, is uh, what keeps our nation, protects our nation. So it's very respectable for us, important for us. But now to have a foreigner in our army is, is unthinkable. It's, it's not acceptable. But are you, for example, as Swedes, ready for foreigners to be, become members of your army? that have uh, no actually background with Sweden. Mm. Uh, well, they are already doing that. You know, uh, the, the man who leads the Swedish army, uh, the commander in chief, he is all about having as many women as possible, as many foreigners as possible, as many LGBTQ people as possible. So I, there are so many things that doesn't work in Sweden, but you see, it's, it's forbidden here to say that people coming from another country could be anything but loyal to, to Sweden and the Swedish people. It, it, I mean, it's so crazy. But if you say that, you are a racist. I, you know, I'm, I'm a racist and a fascist and a Nazi and everything. Yeah, well, they say the same thing to us as well, because they cannot, they cannot really understand that to love your country is uh, to be patriotic. You're yeah. not a racist. You're not a no. fascist. You love your country. You want to protect your country because you're loyal to your country. That's the basic yeah. line of it, because we're loyal to our countries. This is why we, we make such an issue of such things and we, we oppose them, because at the end, which they are changing us. Mm. Yeah. And we yeah, don't, of course. And, and it's so crazy that so many Swedes has bought into this, that they that they don't say what they feel. They, they would only say that if they had a few drinks or is with a very loyal friends, because, you know, saying these things in the workplace or, or you know, where, wherever you could have your career destroyed and your family members would, you know, not want to talk to you anymore. This is how it has been for a number of years in Sweden. Now, it, more and more people are starting to wake up and realize that we will lose our country. Swedes yeah. will be a minority in our own country. And then we can't make our own destiny anymore because yes, foreigners exactly. will vote and you know that 
you know the social democrats they've been pouring in foreigners and they all vote for the red parties the social democrats and the former communists uh, so they need these people they need to keep them coming and they give them swedish citizenship very fast like three years you don't have to speak swedish you don't have to understand anything you don't even know how to read and write you get a swedish citizenship because then you can vote so they can stay in power in parliament that's well, the sort of truth three years is good uh, in turkey we have 45 days wow how come that's crazy <laughs> yes i mean we as uh, my party uh, the democratic party right now we made a, a law uh, application to our parliament saying that uh, especially since 2011 uh foreigners who bought citizenship through uh housing and also uh the citizenship that's given to syrians which is completely completely illegal because mm. uh, it does not conform with any of the uh, register you know regulations of becoming a citizenship uh, there's been a lot of uh, citizens of citizenship given by the government we gave uh, a law uh, offer application saying that uh, for the next uh, app, uh, elections uh, that these people would for only one time be uh, restricted from uh, voting mm. i mean because they have nothing to do with turkey but yet no. they have uh, uh, an opportunity to change the the destiny of turkey and this is yeah. unacceptable unacceptable mm. so i i exactly understands very well where you're coming from Mm. Uh, but what I want to ask you is, for example, is there opposition parties that's objecting to coming into NATO or are they the opposition is also supporting the application? The opposition has all the right opposition. They always wanted Sweden to get into NATO. They have okay. been fighting for this like uh, 20, 30 years, but okay. the Social Democrats were always against it. So there are two parties, two small parties on the left side that is against NATO um, but uh, since uh, the social democrat they, they changed so now the big majority is pro NATO so uh, what do you think I mean the, the, does the so as you uh, replied before the public really doesn't understand the consequences of becoming into NATO I think no they don't so how do you think you can uh, enlighten the public because i mean when you get into this road it's very difficult to come back out of it it is and uh, you can tell erdogan tell him uh, i said uh, can you please hold on until the elections <laughs> okay <laughs> we, we are over because well, i'm in opposition think... but i will tell <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because i think that the swedes need to calm down to 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 understand what a great step this is, a, a huge step, I mean, for Sweden to give up our neutrality and get into this military alliance where we could have nuclear weapons on our soil, where Swedish soldiers would be sent into meaningless wars that the US always start because they need the wars to keep the machine going. And so I really hope that, uh, that Erdogan stays um, hard in this and say that now that you you even did this new deal or, or confirmed the deal with Kakabave, now I don't want to talk to you at all. Not <laughs> until after elections. <laughs> But uh, one last question before we wrap it up. I want to ask you, is Sweden in a way uh, looking at uh, the entry of NATO uh, a means of selling more arms? Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. You know, we have this Wallenberg family that is uh, sort of... Um, they're in the deep state. They own the telecommunications in 184 countries. They are a big player, but their motto is to act without being seen. So not many people around the world knows how, how, how powerful this Wallenberg yeah. family is. And who, who went to Helsinki with our prime minister, Magdalena Andersson, to meet the, fi the Finnish prime minister, if not a Mr. Wallenberg.
So oh, I what hit, a coincidence. What a coincidence. <laughs> yeah. So of course they want Sweden to get into NATO so they can so that Sweden can sell more arms and, and all these companies with the telecommunication and everything. So yeah, of course. And they, they, the Wallenberg family has always had a grip on the Social Democrats. Don't think that they dislike the Social Democrats just because they are socialists, because they realized very quickly that this was going to be the big party in Sweden. Uh, so they have always had close connections. Um, yeah. Well, uh, with such powerful uh, families, I really don't think that any party is personal. So no. <laughs> just the win, win, win yeah, <laughs> mentality. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So, uh, well, thank you very much then, uh, Ingrid. We'll uh, follow this situation up very closely. Uh, yeah. With regards to Turkey, we also, uh, I mean, we have no problem with Sweden, but our red line is terror. Yeah. So, uh, and in a way, as you uh, stated very clearly, it's actually in your benefit that uh, we are, uh, you know, holding on to this very strongly. Yeah. So we will continue also with the opposition. I mean, uh, people sometimes get uh, being in opposition in a, in a different way, in, not in the correct way. They think, oh, we have to oppose everything. But if something is, is correct, then as mm -hmm. the opposition, and if it's the uh, men, uh, beneficiary for the country, for our country, then we have to support the government. Of course. This, uh, on this topic, we actually support the government. I think uh, we have no problem with Sweden or Finland, but uh, the relationship between terror must be uh, stopped immediately because at the end at the end eventually this terror terrorism will come to sweden you will live it of course you of will course. live it I, and, yeah i know i know Ila. So, i know so okay well thank you very much then um, thank you uh, we'll have a updated program very soon i think okay <laughs> let's do that bye bye okay. take it Take care.